we'll, 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 we'll link this in the code Geass. We'll, we're about to start talking about code Geass. If Lelouch got killed in the first episode, would that be the same as him after you watched 49 episodes getting to the end and accomplishing what he accomplished? You're talking about death, which is like the end, whereas in our argument before, there was never like an end point. Like you get cut from your high school team, it's not the end. You could like work hard and then like try and get better. You get you lose the NBA finals, unless that's your last year in the NBA, then it's not the end. You can win it next year. That's not a guarantee. But anyways, Lelouch is my, is my guy. I think he, he was the best character in the show. He was. He was the best character in the show. Now, with that being said, we, 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 won't, we won't even say he died, all right? What if <clears throat> Le, Lelouch, he obviously told you, like, his plan was to obliterate Britannia, right? What if he never got that opportunity to Instead, he, he just he just never got his he just never got his gios from C two, like it stopped at that point where he never got it, and then he just went back to school as his normal life. Versus he, he wouldn't have if he didn't get that uh, gios. He was about to die right on the spot. We don't know that they could have like easily took him in and be like, "Hey, look, we're gonna question you and stuff like that." We, we, we don't know they're how re- they're ready to shoot him. That's pretty much they were, what the they guy said. Him, but like. Even the guy pretty much said, like, you're going to die. And then, like, he got the power, and then he just started talking. And he was like, well. Exactly. If they were going to shoot him, they would obviously shoot when he was talking. They, they had really – they, they, they just, In movies, villains do that. They like to be, like, all dramatic before they – not even villains. Just people like to, like, just talk before they kill someone. They, they do. They do. They like to talk. It's like, what are, what are your last words? And then he, like, got the gios, and then he's Dude. like, my last words are suck it. Kill yourself. But they, they were talking way too long. Way, way too long. But with that being said, say in like he just didn't get killed at that point, but he never got the Gios. Um, are you saying that that's basically the same as if he got the Gios and then he enacted his plan, what he wanted to do? All right, you're going to have to repeat that because I, I didn't catch that. <laughs> so uh, I'm saying that like, he, he after he got his Gios, he was kind of like able to he ba- he basically changed his plans right. He got the Gios, he changed his plans to how he wanted to take conquer Britannia, and I didn't I don't think it like it kind of just expedited his plan. He had the same plan of destroying Britannia, but now he's like now this is gonna make it so much easier. It did, but like you cannot say that having that cool Gios did not allow him to do things that originally wasn't in his plan. I, I I just told you it just made it, it expedited it. No, no, because like no, half the things he did, he he specifically needed the power to do them. If he didn't have that power, he he wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, he would have had to do it some other way. But he, no, I think some of those things was impossible to do unless he had that power. I agree. He would have had to do it some other way. Which, so I'm thinking. Which I like, don't. I don't even know if he could have done it because yeah, other, he, other people are out here with gioses. He probably would have had no chance. Exactly. He wouldn't have no chance. It, it, basically, it basically, like, his pl- the trajectory of his plan um, greatly changed when he got that power. It's like, yeah, I'm agreeing with you on that. Mm-hmm. So, basically, what I'm saying is that the way he got the Gios and the way it happened happened pretty early, and he was able to change his entire plan. It, he made, his plan was, like, actually surrounded around the Gios after he got it. Whereas before his plan had nothing to do with Gios. He got it early enough that he was able to enact his whole plan based on his power. I now, mean, he had to make changes at the end of the show, even like stuff was always changing. Stuff was, stuff was always changing. That's true. Even when his goal was in, even when his goal was in sight, like stuff still happened to where he had to change. Oh, but like he, he's, he's a, he's actually a good example, right? likened take the example of him um getting the code Gios that allows him to enact his plan you you saw the flashback when he was a kid even when he told suzaku he was like i'm just going to obliterate Britannia." dude i i did not like suzaku at all and i mean suzaku like 
part of my lane. Shizaka was a bitch. A but, scrub. <laughs> I'm, I thought I thought we were gonna like disagree on a lot of a lot of the characters, but so so far we're like two for two with Lelouch being like that guy. There's a reason why it's my favorite anime of all time, and it's because Lelouch is that guy. Um, and then I I feel like even though I I'm not really like a fan. I guess that's putting it putting it lightly. I'm not really a fan of Suzaku. I feel like his character definitely like amplified the anime just of him being that annoying character that was pissing me off the whole time. It did. It's a, it was a lot of things that didn't agree with him. We're, we're going to get into him in a second. But I feel like we should get into him now. I'm almost. I'm la- this is the question I got to ask you, though. All right. So, Lelouch, getting the code Geass. You saw, like, in a flashback when he told Suzaku he wanted to obliterate Britannia when he was a little kid. Yeah. All right? And after that, even when he, when he met Suzaku, like, before what they thought was poisonous gas was being released, he said it again. My thing is, like, so we clearly see that his goal from a kid up until now has always been to obliterate Britannia. Correct, right? Correct. All right. Now, we'll say, like, him almost getting shot, but, like, not really getting shot – is like Michael Jordan getting cut from his basketball team. Michael Jordan's goal was never to like get onto the basketball team. It was to win the NBA Finals. Now, getting cut from the basketball team, he has the opportunity to like correct his course and still make it to the NBA Finals. Lelouch almost getting shot, getting the power of Giyasi now has the ability to like take over Britannia. Him almost getting killed right there would have been super different than if he had his code Gios, he's about to take over and then somebody is about to assassinate him in his sleep. He, he can't correct that. It's over. He's asleep. And well, I feel like not him. Like he didn't know this at first, but he, he thought not only died later, like, like in at some point within the show, like he thought like not only was dead. He did. So, and, so but he kept going on thinking that she was dead like ultimately she ended up being alive but he didn't know that so he goes on like i feel like that might be equivalent to like losing the nba finals like not not only he's dead like his whole reason for the living is dead but then he just keeps going on he's still like he's like all right i'm still gonna obliterate britannia like that would be like trying to win the finals the next year it's like you know what this was like he was he was deeply depressed. You would be deeply depressed if you lost the NBA Finals. But you know what? You, you got to keep going on. He, he just – That's he, true. That's true. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to bring in a very, very real example that, like – I, I want to see you disagree with it because, like, I, I just don't see how you would. But <laughs> <laughs> say, say you're dating a girl, right? You could date this girl for two months and you guys break up, right? After two months, it wasn't working out. You guys break up. Or this getting cut from a high school basketball team. Or you can date this girl for 10 years. You guys got engaged. And you guys about to get married. But then she breaks it off right before your marriage. Now, but it's, it's the same girl. You either dated her for two months or you dated her for 10 years. And then you guys broke up. You can say you can always get another girl and marry her. <clears throat> but you're not telling me that breaking up with this girl at two months and breaking up right before her, right before you guys get married, carries the same weight. Because it doesn't. It's like, it's, it's, two, it's two different things. The same goal when you first started dating her was possibly to get married. But ha- having it happen before you got married and having, having it happen two months in a relationship, two different things. Yeah. Exactly. I don't, and, I don't know how that, like... But what I'm saying is, if you break up with this girl for two months, you still have nine years and 10 months to find another girl and possibly it's not like the same argument that you were just presenting. Cause in both scenarios, you're like Michael Jordan, he's trying to get to the NBA finals. Exactly. Just like you're All trying right. to marry a girl. Uh huh. Okay. And then you're like, t- t- uh, 10 years from now, he's still trying to get to the NBA finals and he like loses right before. But mm-hmm. if you, if you break up with that girl after two months, your goal is not going to still be to like marry that girl. No, no. Your, your goal is to still is to still get married. So like when, when you, you can have, still you can still get married after that ten year relationship is over. You can, you can. Now the thing is though, at what at what point in time? I don't I don't necessarily think those are equivalent 
I, I think that was equivalent. I think those are very equivalent because say that specific girl is the You're not gonna be trying to marry that specific girl after you break up with her after two months. Exactly. And after you lose the NBA finals, you're no longer trying to win the twenty fifteen NBA finals. You're trying to win the twenty sixteen NBA finals. Like each final can be a different girl, but they're all like you're in this <laughs> marriage, which is kind of like winning the NBA finals. Well, speaking of different girls, like Lelouch had like all of them. <laughs> he Lelouch did have all of them. Yeah, that's true. Um, wait, 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 which which girl did you did you like the most? And we're just gonna switch the conversation like that. I wanted you to we're, see. We're supposed to be talking about anime, and you're just trying to talk about basketball. And hey. I told you I'm not gonna agree with you on that point. Like I don't, I don't know how you can agree with me on that point because I don't even know what we're arguing about anymore. The, the main th- you're you're just bad. trying to say like one would be worse than the other. I feel like they're both bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to say they're both not on equal footing. I know, but we need to uh, agree to disagree and move on. Agree. To... <sighs> well, we're gonna open up to the fans one day, like because there's no way you can agree to disagree with that. That's like saying, "Hey, look, I I am. You're just refusing to." <laughs> you, but like, it's like saying two plus two equals five. Yes, you can say that, but that is mathematically and logically wrong. Yeah, but what we're talking about is a matter of opinion, where two plus two equals five, that's not a matter of opinion, that's just wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what we're discussing. We're discussing like something that's clearly wrong. We're going we're gonna to come back to this at the end of the show, because I'm not going to let this go. All right, well, you need to let it go for now. Right, right, for now. What was your question again? I was just trying to change the subject. We can talk about whatever you want. I was saying what... uh. What what girl do you think was baddest, or wh- which one of Lelouch's hoes did you like? <laughs> I would definitely say oh C two C two hands down. Uh, I think I like Colin's character the most, but I feel like Shirley was just the realist. She was, she was down no matter what. So I feel like Shirley was my least favorite one. That's uh, you probably she's your least favorite because like she had like no impact on like the actual war so you're probably just liking these girls that are actually like had an impact on the war like colin was out there definitely impact in the war c2 definitely played a major role on the war but shirley like never wavered she was like like she did at first because she's like oh like zero killed my dad but like then she like she got over that and she's like dude i'm just down for lelouch no matter what even as she's dying she's like I, I got these false memories and I still just like fell in love with you like several times. I just feel like she was down no matter what. Whereas Colin ended up like fighting her at or fighting uh, Lelouch at the end. They were actually like on opposite sides. So she obviously wasn't down the whole time. Oh, let, let not be confused. Colin knew or Colin was closer to zero than she was Lelouch. Like there was some sexual tension in between um, like Colin and Lelouch, but like. It was, it was hard to decipher that just because the Colin we knew is the Colin that trusted Zero, not Lelouch. Whereas, like, Shirley only knew Lelouch as Lelouch. Yeah, so, but then she, she found, she was one of the first to find out, I think, I mean, this is an anime I'm assuming you've seen several times. You said it's your favorite. How, how many times have you seen it? I would say I've seen it, I can't even put a number on it. It's definitely more than 10. Okay, well, I, I've only seen it the one time. I, I crammed it in a week. If you uh, if you saw episode one, we were talking about our favorite animes. I hadn't seen Code Geass at that point. So I've only seen it once. So I might, like, I definitely look for. I already look forward to watching it again. Uh, I would rate it very highly. Uh, probably is already at the top of my list. I don't know. It could be my favorite. But it's still fresh in my mind, so I'll have to, I'll have to ponder on that more. But it could be my favorite. I actually liked it a lot. But... The the point I was making is like I might not be remembering some stuff correctly because I haven't seen it as many times as you, and I also just like crammed it all into a week. <laughs> but but I'm pretty sure did Shirley find out about Lelouch being zero before Colin did? She was like one of the first to find out, right? Yes. She okay. Did. So she 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 was in love with Lelouch, but even after finding out that he uh he was zero she like she had like an internal battle about how she felt about him and then she still came out like i'm I'm still down with lelouch she did that's different and she right. knew she knew he was zero like she she's seeing what he's doing on the news she like 
she might not be like talking to zero specifically but she knows lelouch is zero and she sees what he's doing like see she sees all these explosions on tv knows well, that the, lelouch is behind it and like she's still down her her mind got surely wiped after that yeah but then when she got her memories back she was still down she was down when she shot valetta she shot valetta for lelouch <laughs> wait, and, then, and then she lost her memories and got them all back and then she was still like all right Lest I be confused, she shot Valletta because she was like overcome by emotion. She didn't know what was the right thing to do. All right, she she was nervous. She knows she loved Valletta, and she could have she could have just been like she was about to shoot Lelouch, and she could have just walked away, or she could have shot Lelouch. So she or she could have stopped this this other person who showed up out of nowhere from killing Lelouch. She had like three options. She could have just like done nothing. She could have killed Lelouch herself, or she could have stopped the uh, Valletta from killing Lelouch. And she wavered. She like didn't know which one to choose, and she made a pain decision. If you watch that scene, I believe she closes her eyes when she shoots Valletta, and like even she. Whether her know, eyes were open or not doesn't change the fact that she did it. It doesn't change the fact that she did it, but like she she wavered. She, she still knew what she was doing. She's not like I'm gonna just close my eyes and fire randomly. No, no, no. But the situation was like super high because after after she did that she like ran away she didn't even try to help Lelouch. She there was are like, several situations that were super hot within this show you, you just got to act in the moment you can't be like well it surely acted in the moment so it's not like legit but now wait, wait so are you telling me that because there's a fourth option she could have shot Valletta and then got Lelouch out of there out of harm's way and took him out of safety and then like came up well, to him that, that option's more of like after she did one of the original three. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying though that like you said she was down, but after she shot Valletta, she got she got her ass out of there. If she was really down for the loose, would she not have taken him to safety after that? Well it's like you said, she was like frantic, but she in that in in that frantic moment she still made the the choice to save Lelouch. Her options were kill Lelouch, do nothing, or save him. She still she still saved him by doing that. I guess you're saying she actually, could, wait, wait, wait. actually if, if, if really, could have really saved him. She could have saved him even more by like dragging him to safety, but she still saved him. She could have. Or if we're talking about the fifth option, if she was really down, she wouldn't even have questioned his loyalty, and she would have never followed him there in, in like in the first place. Well, dude, she didn't know prior to that that he was zero, so she had to make like a split decision. She like, didn't know, but but like Lush, a random person just came up to you and like, hey, look, we think that you might be connected to the Black Knights. We know that you're close to him, and um, we want to use your relationship to find out more information about him. So can you follow him? She she was gonna she was gonna betray him. Was, was she just gonna like follow him? And be like, oh hey, she didn't even tell him. Actually, if she was really down, she would have came to Lush. Hey, Lush, this lady came up and said you might be connected to the Black Knights. And she asked me a whole bunch of other questions. If she was really down. She would have done that. She didn't do that. Who is this lady? Valletta. When Valletta came up to Shirley and said, hey, look, we think he's connected to the Black Knights. If Shirley was really down, she would have told Lelouch, hey, look, this, this silver-haired lady, this, this girl with white hair, um, I didn't really get her name. She would have described her brown skin. Then Lelouch would have been like, oh, shit. She's the one I put my Gios on when I still when I took her nightmare. You know what that means? It means that even if I use my Gios on them, they still might retain some of the memories from that point in time if she was able to track me. And he would have got rid of that. If Shirley was really down, that's what she would have did. She didn't oh, do that. I don't really remember that part. I thought she was just following him because she was, like, suspicious. I didn't know that Valletta – I didn't remember Valletta telling her to follow him around. Yeah, Valletta came up to her, showed her a picture of Lucia, and was like, hey, look – we think that she might be, he might be connected to the Black Knights. That's why when Shirley was following Lelouch, Valletta was following Shirley. I don't think – I mean, that might have been dumb on Shirley's part. I'm not out here saying she was the smartest. But uh, I don't think she knew that Valletta was following her, and I think she was just following Lelouch because, like, oh, yeah. she, wanted, she wanted to know what was going on. He hadn't been at school that much, and – this person presented an idea that kind of made sense. Like maybe he's not at school cause he's doing all this stuff and she had to find out. Oh yeah. yeah. No, she, she definitely didn't know. Um, Valletta was following her unless Valletta like let her know that. But with that being said, so first off she's following the loose cause she doesn't really trust them. Second off, she's not even careful 
about. I don't know if it's that she didn't trust. I think that she just wanted to know the truth. Well, maybe that's the same thing, but I don't know. It's kind of like two sides of the same coin. Um, because as you remember, um, he was gambling at the beginning, like sneaking off to like nobles and playing them for chess. And then when, um, when Ra- was his name Roz? Rouse. Rivel? Rivel. Yeah, when Rivel was like, um, hey, look, when are we going to play the nobles? Lelouch told him, hey, look, I found another game of chess to play with some more people. And he was like, oh, we can take me along. And he said, nah, I don't think it would be, uh, be your type of game. She was around that when she heard that conversation. So he's still telling them that he's perceived that he's still playing chess with other people. It's just a, um, a different type of environment. So he was, a, he was a chess master. I do like that about Lelouch, too. Exactly, but his, his life, cover, life was a game of chess to him. Yeah, see, his his uh his cover was like playing that game of chess, and Rivel and all the rest of them thought that well, he, he was, still did it as zero too, because he did it with a uh, he played against Schneisel. Yeah, he did. And I mean, then towards the uh, towards the end of the show, uh, I, there was this one line that Sch, uh, Schneisel gave, which I thought was hilarious. Like, they're like, "You're going against like." Lelouch right now and he's like dude I've, I've never lost a Lelouch at anything like you don't gotta worry <laughs> yeah he hasn't lost a Lelouch in chess but that was a long time ago he's like um, he's like I have never lost a Lelouch and then the guy he was talking to was like oh okay then we'll definitely support you like <laughs> hey, you, gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do but but it was like I just thought it was funny because it was also a fact he's like well yeah Lelouch has never been able to beat me at anything <laughs> but that means Lelouch learned from his loss that he was able to overcome that um but bottom line is, Shirley was definitely wavering. She was definitely not as down. And um, well, she, you couldn't expect her to be down right away because, like, she was distraught because her dad died. And then she, like, less. didn't like Zero because Zero killed her dad. And then he find, she finds out that the person she loves is the person that killed her dad. And, and, and indirectly, because I don't, I don't think they ever showed her dad dying. I don't know which mm-hmm. character her dad was. So, like, he indirectly died just for being maybe he was a soldier or something. I don't know what he yeah, was. He was like, he was taken on by the mudslide basically. Okay. So yeah, like you can't just tell her to like, you can't expect her just to get over that right away, but it was just like, she didn't, she didn't dwell on it too long. She definitely could have dwelled on it a lot longer. Sure. My, my original point was that like knowing Lelouch and finding out he is zero is definitely different than being close with zero and then finding out he's Lelouch. I, she knew, she knew uh, Lelouch before he was zero. No, but I'm saying though she so she was she was there from the beginning, and then even though she was kept in the dark and found out that zero killed her dad, she was still like you know I, I still I still got these feelings for Lelouch, so I feel like she's just the realist. Exactly. No, I don't think she's a realist for that. Like Shirley, Shirley only had a relationship with Lelouch. She didn't have a relationship with Zero. The only thing she knew was there was like at that point, yeah. Well, she kept a think- secret though. She's like, even though like I don't know everything that's going on, like I'm not gonna tell anyone. No, because didn't she get her um, memories erased after she found out about Zero, but then before uh, Zero killed her dad? No, because uh, he he even used his geos on her to make her forget about that, and that was before she got her memory erased. Pretty sure the timeline is like she finds out that Zero killed her dad, and then she finds out Lelouch is Zero, and then don't, don't they go to that cable car? And there's that other dude with the geos that can read minds, and then he has mm-hmm. to like just erase her memory, or of her dad dying by Zero through geos, and then later on she just gets fake memories that. Yeah, he, he did do that to her. Um, oh, but the, the point is, like, Shirley only has a relationship with Lelouch. She doesn't have a relationship with Zero. And I understand that, but I, I still think she was – I mean, I still liked her because she was just – she wasn't going to tell anybody, and she was just, like, loyal to him no matter what. She's running around with the – she's a high school girl, and she's, like, running around with this gun later on in the show just because of Lelouch. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she's cool, but I'm, I'm just saying that, like, her relationship with Lelouch is different than Colin's relationship with Lelouch. Like, I mean, Lelouch had so many girls. Like all his, all his, he he even had that Japanese princess who I thought was kind of cool because I feel like she was the most assertive. 
like Shirley's just like in the background having a crush on Lulu. So then this little girl's like, no, that like that's my husband right there. Exactly. And that and that's I, I applaud her for that. That's what Shirley should have been doing. Like she was Shirley was so afraid of rejection that like that that stopped her from getting what should have been hers. Like she she was over here, she was over here confronting Colin, like, oh, what are you running off with Lelouch for? Yet she was afraid to confront Lelouch. Like she was she was not making any moves. She was trying to be sneaky behind the scenes. Yeah, but I, I feel like I feel like he showed the most – Lulu showed the most emotion over, like, Shirley uh, rather than any of the other girls. Because uh... Co- Colin got captured, and I, I feel like he was just – I'll have to rewatch that scene, but when Colin got captured, he was just like, oh, shit, like, that kind of sucks. I'll come get you, though, but, like, that kind of – he wasn't, like, sitting there, like – No, this dude was like, yo, I can't lose Colin, and he mobilized that fleet to try to get her back. He didn't – he he actually – uh. He actually took a while to get her back. He he was like, I got other priorities. Like he took a while to get to get Colin back. What well, I don't think so. I think that like it there was a lot like- of other stuff that happened before because Colin was just like I don't know. I mean, because the anime didn't have like little timelines popping up, so I don't know how long Colin was actually captured. But I'm pretty sure it was like a while because she was just talking to Nanali a lot. And then Suzaku would sh- show his bitch face to like try and talk to her. <laughs> but like definitely after she got captured, he was like, "Oh shit!" He he look like he was advised by uh, Diatar to be like, "Hey, look, we shouldn't go after her." Which I kind of like that guy, but I couldn't get I couldn't get behind him just because he was uh, a detard. Like <laughs> like why the name of that? <laughs> detard is kind of bad. But um. Detard, Artard, like same thing. I, I thought his name was Detard. In in the sub, they just like that's how it's spelled. But in the sub, or not the sub, the dub, they just straight up call him Detard. Oh yeah, I think in the sub they pronounce his name Detard. Yeah, they're they're just like they're like, where's Detard at? <laughs> either way, either way, pronounce his name. He was like, yeah, we we shouldn't like we shouldn't risk our fleet in order to like save one soldier. And this dude was like. He no, was, we're risking the whole thing to get yeah, called yeah, back. The best yeah, but he, but he, uh, I don't remember the timeline of events, but like that might have been before they even defeated Charles. Oh like, yeah, might, that was way, it was way before they defeated Charles. That she got captured. Yeah, yeah. So he went off and did like a ton of other stuff before he came back to Colin. No, no, no. he he, he tried to save Colin first, and then it didn't work. Like Diotar was right; they didn't have the manpower in order to take it back but even without that manpower um, oh, you're, no you're right in the moment he tried to get her back but then like after he couldn't he like just went on to other plans yeah because he yeah he, he started to get the power it's like um it's like say it's like say you take your like your level 10 pokemon and then you go against a level 50 pokemon and you lose you don't be like you know what let me go to a level 11 and go back and fight him you said okay let me get to level 50 so there's an even fighting round and then go back and get her and that's kind of how it was. Like, no, you're just, right. I did. I did like Colin a lot. I felt. I felt like all his hoes were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I just felt like out of all of them, that like Shirley was probably at the bottom. Uh, no, her her death like hit me the hardest. It pulled at my heartstrings the most. I thought it was gonna be when Euphemia died. That this 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 anime had like the saddest deaths I think of any of any anime <laughs> I've ever seen. Because like, I, I I was like getting emotional when uh. Well, I didn't. I didn't really cry, but I definitely like felt some sort of way when uh, Euphemia died. And then later on in the show, uh, I, I I thought that was gonna be the hardest one. But then when Shirley died, I felt like that one was maybe even sadder. That one was sadder. But both of those like cut deep. I, I still like get a little bit emotional when I watch them now. Yeah. But, um, that Shirley just made me like. R- Rolo definitely went down to like the bottom of the characters, the bottom of the rung after he did that. I was like, "Come on now!" And I mean, he he didn't know any better. He did he didn't. He, he like he, I I don't really even know his backstory that well. So basically, his gias, you like you know, it was, it was like the stop time. It stops his heart. I know, I know, but what like was he like created by Britannia? Like what what was he doing like before? He he was an orphan. Oh, okay, and then they, they I guess they took because they took they took a whole bunch of orphans and they tested like the gios on them or put the put the gios in them, and then that's what his gios manifested into. 
Um, he he just thought he was protecting Lelouch. I definitely like dislike Rolo for doing that, but I feel like he he didn't know any better. He was like Lelouch is like my only friend, and this this girl knows way too much. He, she did she did know way too much. She, that's what I'm saying. For like someone that wasn't involved in the war, she like definitely like took an interest in figuring out what was going. No one else that wasn't involved in the war like knew what was going like all these other people in the ghetto or at Ashford Academy like none of them knew what was going she like went out of her way to figure out what was going on with Lelouch but the thing is she like just knew way, she just knew way too much with with the Rolo though because I, I really wanted to see if there was a little bit of character development to him but when he did that to Shirley it was just like he his motives changed but he didn't learn anything from um from when he was first introduced. I don't know if you remember, but when he was first introduced, he was um like it's like I'm was, I'm really good at killing people and that's all I do. That's pretty much But he was he was talking to Valletta underneath that little pipeline and then a guy came in and then he said, Oh hey, I got some news for you guys. And he's like, Oh, do you want me to leave? And then Rolo paused time and went down and killed him because he was like, Oh, I can't over I can't um Yeah, he's like I can't let anybody else know about Gia. She Well she said I can't risk anyone he said, I can't risk anyone knowing about the intel. And then it was like... It was specific to the Gios, wasn't it? I, I can't remember what the conversation. I don't know if it was specific to the Gios, but I do... I think remember. they were talking about Gios, and then that guy came in and just like, oh, I didn't hear anything. And he's like, fuck, you didn't. Like, like <laughs> but even, even then, Vleta was like, yo, this is a, like a it's, a... it's like a soldier on our side. And he's, a, he's a team player. There's Even if he would have heard something, it would have been like... It's not up to – I don't think it was in Rolo's power to decide that, like, hey, look, I think this dude might have heard something. Might have heard something. Let me kill him. On the hierarchy of command, um, Rolo was kind of like a mercenary. So I don't think he should have had the power to, like, kill him like that. And also it was sort of just like, yeah, we get it. We get it. You're a killing machine. Um, it, it was kind of like too much. But then we did the same thing with Shirley. It was like, yeah, his motives change, but – he didn't really progress. He he really didn't get any critical thinking skills. He didn't learn about situations better, and it was just sort of just like he was still the same mode, same mode. I mean, I definitely dislike Rollo for doing that, but I'm just saying like he I'm, I'm just he, saying, he, he was just trying to protect Lelouch. I, I'm I'm saying I definitely dislike him for doing that, but I I guess I mean I I based off his character, I could see like why he did it. But my grab isn't like not necessarily him doing that. Like you could have like sub anybody, he would like stab them. My thing is like from when he was first introduced to that point, it's like he didn't even learn anything. There was no, um, there, there was no. He was like he did the first thought that popped into his head. He didn't analyze the situation because I like characters that analyze. Like loose, he analyzes every situation, takes out each possibility, and then he chooses. Well, Rolla Roll was just a pawn for everyone. Rolla was a pawn for everyone. Um, but that's the thing. I wanted him to like learn not to be a pawn, or at least a pawn with like some subconscious that he's a pawn. Nah, I, I I knew that he was gonna kind of be like, I mean, he was definitely powerful, but as far as his like ability to think for himself, I knew he was kind of be gonna be like a scrub a in that scrub. aspect yeah, the whole time. Nah, but I didn't want him to be like that the whole time. Like, I kind I kind of wanted him to get picked off like way earlier in the show. That, I mean, yeah, I thought I definitely thought what Chicago was going to do him in. I feel like he lasted a long time, a lot longer than he should have. I mean, he has a he has a stops time. He could have lasted the whole show, to be honest. Although his his Gios power very inconsistent, but as a whole, another conversation. Well, his Gios like didn't even really stop time. It just like froze people. Yeah, I've even like looked up some information on it, and it's it's still yeah, it's very inconsistent because like sometimes it's like it can stop um, a certain area around him, like it's like ten meters like around him, whatever it is, and then other times I think it just it just freezes them because even when uh Suzaku made uh Lelouch talk to Nanali on top of the school, when Nanali was like the viceroy, he's like, hey, I'm gonna give you the phone. You talk to the viceroy. He didn't know it was Nanali, and then he starts talking to Nanali. Mm-hmm. 
And then Rolo just comes up there and she, he freezes Suzaku. So he's pretty much just like freezing people. He's not like freezing time. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing though. Like he's, he's freezing people. But then it's like. Because they even showed on the camera when he froze Lel- uh, Lelouch earlier in the show and got behind him with the gun. Mm. He like looked at the camera and he saw that like time still went by. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's when Lelouch said, you're not actually freezing time. You're freezing like the perception of time. Yeah. Um, but then like, there's like so many other things. Like if you watch when he was flying away with Lelouch, right? Um, you would know, he, I don't know if it was said on the show, but like he can't freeze um, inanimate objects. He can only freeze people. Yeah, that's why those uh, the ships fell down. That the thing though, all right. The sh- did it's because no one was piloting them. No one was piloting it, but they're only not piloting it for like two, like five seconds. And because it, it depends though, because um, say uh, say I'm driving a car and I get frozen, the car doesn't go from sixty to zero. I don't know if there was like a mechanism where you have to like be like up on the controls for it to like stay in the air so if they froze and like dropped their hands then i don't know i feel like that's getting too technical into Tidenko, there's some pretty pretty huge holes like too technical we're talking about like um bullets that, that still... part that part didn't bother me when i watched it i th- i think when you started watching it you have to watch it multiple times like well it's... i mean my my first impression was that didn't bother me that much it should bother you because <laughs> when you start looking at it, you start to see that like my, 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 my main point is that each time he used his Gios, it was a different power. Like each time he used it, there was a specific set of rules to like that one time that didn't make any sense. Um, each time he used it. So it's, it's like he had a different Gios every time. Like, uh, I mean, that I didn't feel like I was that confused, but I was confused when uh, when uh, Lelouch's dad died. I kind of, like, don't really know what happened there. Was it just that God killed him? What do you mean? When they were on that, like, I forget what it was called, the that elevator they were oh, on. Thought elevator? Yeah, and then his dad was immortal, but then his dad just dies when, like, Lelouch's Gios gets an upgrade. So I was just kind of confused at how he died. So, um... I know he starts disappearing, but I don't really remember, like, why he was disappearing. i tell you that, but, like, one last thing I got to say about Rello's Gios was, like, when he was using it, if you remember, he was holding Lelouch in his hand. Every time he, he used it, Lelouch froze. But yet, when they were on the roof, he specifically only froze Suzaku. So why did that, at that point, he decide to, like, also freeze Lelouch with everything else and not just, like, keep him not being frozen. I'd have to go back and see, like, when he froze Suzaku on the roof, it kind of showed, like, a sphere or, like, a dome, and then, like, everything within that dome was frozen. So I don't know if when he was freezing all those, like, other nightmares, if, like, the dome engulfed their nightmare as well. See, I look at that part. And also, if um, Lelouch was inside the dome, he was also on the roof. No, he wasn't. It, it, it was. Um, it just covered. It just covered Suzaku. Yeah, and even then, it's like, dang. So now he can control how big he makes this fear when he releases it. There's a lot of like. Yeah, I, mean, I guess that was part of his gias. He could control the radius. You, when you watch it again and you see him use his power like more often, you'll start to see that. I do look forward to watching it again. Like I was saying, like this is going to make any sense. But as far as um, how his dad died. Um, it was basically like the the thought elevator was like the subconscious of mankind, and the subconscious of mankind isn't. I think that I'm not sure. I don't think the word they used was omnipotent, but basically, the subconscious has the conscious, like because it's oh, made man. of evil and bad. If it's made of e- if it's made of bad and good, that means the Lush can use his gios on it, and. Uh, he basically like used it and he basically commanded the time to like march forward. And because his dad and his mom wanted time to stay the same, they stayed the same in that time, which caused him to disappear. So did he use his gios on God? Yes. That's kind of what I 
Because I like he pretty much just like commanded God to like kill them, right? Yes, but it's kind of like so the way they created a thought elevator, uh, like basically their God had a will, and to them, if it has a will, then it can be manipulated. So if, oh, they, if they would have made a God like, without a will or without like, um, oh, they would have like made him like omniscient, like just like outside something of the realm, he wouldn't be able to use it. But they. Charles created that God with the will of um, with the will of mankind, and the will of mankind is tainted. So he was able to manipulate that. And then, so like V two was like a mortal, and then somehow Charles just made it so he was mortal. He like took his code or something. That's what yes. I was reading. So how did he do that? So. Because uh, I recently found this out. I think this was like around the third or fourth time I watched it. Um, it's because it seemed, it seemed like Charles pretty much was just like, all right, I'm immortal now instead of V2. Yeah, he... I forgot how he took his code. Um, there is... Because I think there, there's a way. I can't remember what the way was. But I think that there's a way for... The Lelouch to forcibly take C2's code without C2 giving it to him. So, Because his Gios just got awoken to the point where he's powerful enough to do that? Uh, yeah, oh, you have to have both the Gioses, and I think there's enough, I think there's another um, element that you have to combat. Uh, actually, let me look it up. But it so, you, so you have to, like, take the code from someone else to be immortal? Because I was wondering how... Lelouch was an immortal because he like woke in his he woke his Gios up to like the max maximum point. Yeah, so you have to take the code from like the person you got the Gios from. Okay. Because um, so that's how like C two got it because she took it from that other girl. Yeah. Oh, she got tricked into taking that from that other girl. Yeah. And then they don't ever show who V two took it from. Uh they don't. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so Charles took it from V two. V two. That's why he was immortal. And then, if Lelouch had done that to C two, he would have been immortal. But he never did it. All right, I guess that clears it up a little bit. There's, I still think there's some like gray area in there, on just like how they did it, especially since he was like nowhere near V two when he did it. Uh so he, he was in the thought elevator. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if this answers it. Dude, Suzaku, like, f I don't know, man. I don't even have words for that guy. See, they got a little bit better at the end. Just his whole character was ridiculous. Like, he's Japanese, so he kills his dad, who's like the Japanese prime minister, and then he, like, just joins Britannia, so he's like, oh, like, even though I'm Japanese, I'm just going to join Britannia. So I'm going to conform with the enemy, just become part of the enemy and try and create change within. That would, that would, that would pretty much be like us like joining the Nazis and then just trying to make like the Nazis better from within. No, no, no. no. A good example of that would be, um, that, that to get like too political, is Barack Obama becoming the president of the United States and using that power um, after he's been a career politician to – kind of like change the system that he disagrees with no but like if the nazis like took over like the world mm -hmm. or like and then suzaku's just like the last form of resistance against the nazi i'm gonna kill our leader and then just like work my way up within the nazis and try and change it from within so if he joined the nazis worked his way up and then killed hitler before world war ii started but he didn't kill – he didn't kill – it was never his goal to kill Charles. I think he definitely said he wanted – he wanted to take Charles' place. He, he, wanted, he, wanted, he, he wanted to take the Knight of Wands' place. So he pretty yeah. much wanted to work directly under Charles. He's like, that would be like trying to be like Hitler's right-hand man. And then he has the opportunity to kill him. Or yeah, but that was that was never his end goal. I feel like he he didn't even have an end goal. That's like the most annoying part of him is he like didn't even know what he was trying to do with his life. 
granted, he was really just trying to provide the opportunities to give the 11s a better life. See, yeah, oh, yeah. But by, 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 by squashing them, whenever the, yeah, the, black, the, black, the, black, the black knights are trying to rise up and he's like out here like trying to squash them. No, no, no. But if you remember, the black knights stood for justice. They didn't stand for helping the 11s. So whatever something bad They were happened, all 11s, though. They were from that one ghetto. They were from the one ghetto, but... They were all Lush Japanese. Said, they were trying Lush to reclaim said, Japan. That's true. But Lelouch said the Black Knights are for the weak. And he showed that when he... Um, when, he uh, when he murdered, like, the Japanese people after they captured Prince Euphemia in that tower. In the hotel. And they were, um, they were holding... Yeah, Prince but then uh, Toto... Uh, ended up joining him, and he was like on that Japanese squad. I don't. Toto wasn't on that squad. Toto had nothing to want anything to do with them because when it when it he, showed, he, he was with them. Toto wasn't in that building. No, but he was part of like that Japanese federation. No, because if you if you notice the cut scene when they showed him, they're like, "Hey, look, what are they doing?" And he had his eyes closed. He's like, "We're not joining that battle. That's not for us." No, but he was like originally part of that group. He was originally part of that group, but he didn't share their ideals, which is why he wasn't there when they overtook that hotel. He didn't agree with that. I know, but I'm just saying he was like originally part of that Japanese resistance group, and then they ended up a portion of them, and, and ended up teaming up with the Black Knights. So they were like all pretty much. I'm like most of them were Japanese. It ended up turning into something else, but originally they were mostly Japanese. Well, that's, that's, why Colin, that's why Colin's always like, why are you, like, fighting me? Like, why aren't you, like, on our side? Wait, 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 that's why Colin's always like, what? Why are you fighting us? Who who did you say that to? Susaku, because he's, like, oh, he said, part, said, Japanese, said, part Japanese. He's like, why aren't you, like, but, on our side? And she, then he's like, well, I, I'm, like, a scrub, so that's why I'm not on your side. Nah. She didn't say he was on his side, but the mission of the Black Knight was still to help the weak, not necessarily just the Elevens. Yeah. That's like when Zero, like, started leading them. But, like, prior to that, they were just trying to free Japan. Oh, yeah, but, like, they – so, but Suzaku was already part of the military. He wasn't part of the – he was never part of the liberation front. I don't think he had that opportunity. Uh, he, he went straight into the military and did it that way. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would do it that way. What do you mean? You get into the system, you work your way up. Like, but but he wasn't even like. It didn't even seem like he was doing like espionage. He was like trying to like conform, and like make Britannia no, great, no. and then transform it once he's at the top. But like, ah, uh, was he though? Because if I remember correctly, he actually had this conversation of him and Euphemia wanting to become. Um, like whatever like the power was but they wanted to be in charge of area 11 so they could remake it to have a think it would be better for them but his goal was to get in a position of power where he but could still be by doing that like you suppress the will of like the japanese people because they didn't really have a say in that it was just like whatever suzaku and britannia wanted area 11 to be like but suzaku knew that he was going to turn around and be for the better he thought, but he wasn't like he wasn't liberating Japan. He was just making. We, we have to remember his goals vastly changed when Euphemia got killed. Like he, he definitely said at the beginning, "Hey, look, I want to." I just feel like he was the bad guy the whole show. He wasn't necessarily the bad guy the whole show. He should have. He should have teamed up with Lelouch from the start, and instead, he's like the direct like object in the way of Lelouch's goal. It was the direct object, but you also have to remember Lelouch messed up the way he was trying to um, get him to come to his side. He said he killed Prince Clovis and he had killed the other people. Um, and he was going to, he expected to kill more people. And that's not what Suzaku wanted. Cause he so Suzaku Suzaku killed a lot of people. So like he directly contradicted what his goal was. If he's out here trying not to kill anyone, no, no, no. He was that he wasn't killing innocent people though. Like when that lady fell off the um the tower when he was chasing after Lelouch, he stopped, went back and saved her, and then wanted to go after Lelouch again. I feel like a lot of the the black knights were like on the right side and he was killing a lot of them. 
Was he, was he killing all the Black Knights? I mean, the Black Knights were on the right side, but that's not to say that what Suzaku was, was trying to do wasn't no. I felt like what he was trying to do was so dumb. Like, he's trying to, like, rise up within Britannia and then make them, like, change the way they govern. But instead, like, he was a pretty powerful player. Like, if, if you're putting him on the chessboard, he was, like, one of the best pieces out there. If he had just joined the Black Knights from the start, it would have been a completely different war. If they had Suzaku the whole time. But Lelouch didn't do that good job at convincing him to join. And let's because not... he was a stubborn idiot, dude. Like, like I did not understand what he was trying to do the whole time. You, jo- you, join, you join the enemy and then try and rise up and then change them. Like, no, you, should, you don't join the enemy. It's like some uh some Kevin Durant stuff when he like guess guess what Ke- guess what I got Kevin Durant two rings Hall of Fame resume like fifty years from now when uh, we're talking to your kids they're gonna be like yo this dude KD won two rings actually I wouldn't be surprised if like 30, 40 years from now there's not five All Stars on the court for every team like p- people act like basketball players don't get better with time. But I digress on that point. Um, Suzaku actually didn't really like start killing these black knights. He, he's gonna be in the history books because he he joined the 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 more powerful side and then rose up within their ranks. But like, you you don't like join evil. You gotta fight evil. Like he's like, oh that I'm, I'm glad you said that. So you say Lelouch was wrong? No, Lelouch was my guy, dude. I was I was no, but. One of the episodes, one of the quote, he says, "What do you do when you face evil that you cannot defeat?" I mean, I don't, I don't remember the scene. So. Oh, it, was, it was the scene when he like um, when he broke apart all the uh, center block puzzles and used that to get away. So I was trying to get away from Rolo, but he was like, well, "What do you do when?" Because he he only took a riot shield, and that was it. They thought he was going to throw the fight, and he said. What do you do when you come across the evil that you cannot defeat? Do you submit to that evil or do you become a greater evil in order to destroy that evil? And obviously the guy was like, oh, I'll fight for justice. You know, some cop out answer. And he was like, oh, I knew you were going to say that. But for me, I become the greater evil to destroy that evil. And then he just like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't, you don't just join the other side and try and change them. I feel like that's a. That's almost like a ridiculous idea that you think that like your your captor, like the person that like took you over, that you can just rise up within their ranks and like change their minds. Isn't that isn't that kind of like what uh, Lelouch did with his plan um Zero Requiem? Didn't he kind of like kill Charles and then in turn become a bigger um tire, like like a bigger dictator than Charles? Yeah, but he, but he took it all over. Like, I feel like Suzaku's goal was never to, like, be the emperor of Britannia and take it all over. He just, wanted to, have, he just wanted to have a lot of influence within Britannia, I guess, so that he can make Area 11 better. But even if you have a lot of influence, like, if you're not the top guy or even a, a, your ideals align with the top guy, you're not really going to do anything unless you, like, get rid of him. I don't think he was ever going to get rid of him. No, no, but you, you have to remember, though, the way their power struggle was – um, even though Charles was like the emperor behind the scenes, we oftentimes heard him saying, yeah, yeah he didn't, he didn't care at all he didn't care about those mundane affairs. And the person who was really running it was um, Schneisel. But then we also know that like, if, um, he would have had to get rid of Schneisel. Who had to get rid of Schneisel? But I, I want to say, I don't think he ever would have done that. Now if, if Suzaku had got up to the night of one, he would have rivaled Schneisel's power. Because the knights served directly under Charles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but Charles, like, wouldn't even have been around because he would have just been on the thought elevator the whole time. Exactly. And I don't, so it, and I don't know if he would have outranked, like, Cornelia. Definitely would have outranked Cornelia. The, the knight of one? Like, yeah, I mean, Schneider would betrayed Cornelia, so. She ended up living, though. <laughs> she, she ended up living, but, like, yeah, he would have been it would be, it would basically, And then she even said some nonsense, like, I understand why you did it. I was like, what? I would never understand why someone just, like, did a machine gun to my back. 
<laughs> you, stood, you stood out of line. You wasn't you wasn't in your place. That's like worse than a stab in the back. That's like a massacre to your back. Yeah. yeah he didn't have a knife. He didn't want to get near her. But it, it, so it basically would have been Suzaku versus Snizel. And I'm pretty sure Snizel, he does not like, because he said, because Lush said it himself, Snizel doesn't fight battles that he can lose. He, he's either going to draw or win. Um, I definitely think that like Suzaku giving up to the Knight of One. Which he, which he didn't draw that. He didn't draw that chess match. You can't just like throw your king and checkmate like you did. You can't. When they, when they were when they were playing at that ch- the Chinese. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, yeah, he just like threw his king in check, and he's like, "All right, now it's a draw." <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't a draw. He he ran out of moves, but like Lu still could have took his king. Yeah, and then he would have won. So I don't get why they said it was a draw. Oh, they said it was a draw because um, was that girl with the glasses? The um, Nina. huh? Nina. Yeah, Nina. It's because she came in there and she like caused a commotion. Yeah, and I didn't then, like. I didn't like her at all either. Didn't like her at all. She was like right below Rolo. No, Dude, right was below. she? Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like a PC way of saying this on our podcast. But was she like pleasuring herself to like Euphemia? At one she point, was, she, she was. <laughs> I, I had to like rewind that. I was like, "Is that what was happening?" Because not, and then Natalie comes up. And she's like, "What's going on in here?" Yeah, that was. <laughs> it's it's. I think I'm pretty sure they blocked. Well, they they had the audio silent for that point when she was doing that. But yeah, it, it, she was pleasuring her stuff. Um, <laughs> she was a little cuckoo over at Euphemia. Uh, but it's because she created that commotion that they agreed that it was a draw. Um, because they, they didn't want to sit down and like finish out the rest of the game. And he – so, when you, wait, do you know how to play chess? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, he basically – when he took his king back, they were just going to keep on making the same moves, which it, it would have been a stalemate. Word. But he – I just thought it was dumb that he did that. Like, he could have just said it was a stalemate. I thought it was dumb that he, like – he's like, now I'm going to go here. <laughs> yeah, he, he wanted to see, was he going to take the easy win or – that's not even how you win. You get him in checkmate, and then they can't make a move. He literally like put himself in a move to like. You can't like move into checkmate. Can you not? No, nah, no. Nah. If it's your turn and you can't move anywhere, and you're not in check, then the game's just over. But if you are in check, then it's checkmate. But you can't like I'm gonna put myself in check. Well, like if you. We, 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 we don't have to debate chess rules, but I just thought that was dumb. Yeah, sure. I mean, I did, like, read a little bit about it because um, th- there was, like, some inconsistencies when they were playing chess. Uh, if, if, you're were, in, like, if you're in check, you have to move yourself out of check, and if you can't, then it's checkmate. But yeah. if, if you're not in check, like, but then you just can't move anywhere, then it's a stalemate because they didn't get you in check, but you can't do anything. So it's it's dumb on their part because they like got you in a position where you can't move anywhere, but you're not in check. But he literally like moved his piece to where like it would get taken. Like you can't do that. So what if he didn't know that he can like him him moving his piece there is still like giving Lelouch an opportunity because like Lelouch can make a move that doesn't take his piece, right? No, if you put your king in check then you're not you're not able to do that unless maybe his, unless maybe his king would have got taken if he did that but i still think that doesn't matter see i don't know that much about chess so no, I, I, I play it like whenever someone wants to play me i'm, I'm all about it that's why i thought it was a little, a little loose i thought it was cool that he was always just out here playing chess i didn't try to learn chess after i'm watching that but no, I'll, I'll, I'll i can teach you how to play i'll smoke you a few times and then maybe you'll Get good enough to where you can. You don't have an iPhone, though. Huh? You don't have an iPhone. No, I'll like play you in person, whenever this quarantine's over. Yeah, but like having the iOS game is like pretty cool too. You play like chess with friends. I'm sure there's probably an app that we can download that's compatible for both phones. I bet you. Bet you try to do it with Rob, and it didn't work. Uh, I think he just like conceded right away or like quit right away because he got bored, <laughs> which was kind of like a waste of both our times. He he like wasted my time by doing that. What do you mean? You got to win. No, we started playing and then he's just like, I don't feel like playing anymore. So I was like, all right. 
technically that means you won. That, that's, that's what Schneisel did to lose. He was like, you know what? I'm tired of playing. I don't, I don't like winning that way because it's not like a status. Like, and that's why Lelouch didn't take his piece. He was like, I can't win like that. Well, he just did a move that like wasn't even illegal. It was, that's what I'm saying. It was dumb. Like You can't even do the move he made. I mean, what happens if you do the move that he made? Would it be like, hey, look. You're literally not allowed to do that. You would be like – that would put you in that you would you would say that would put you in check and they would have to make a different move well the loser didn't tell him to make a different move well anyways i'm trying to think where we should pivot from here i know i know at some point we're going to talk about what geos power we want maybe we can do that now oh unless... yeah i'm actually exploring him the last year i was like oh shit he's not at the point where he knows there's multiple geoses it um, was it was literally the next episode is when that I don't remember his name but that guy that was like, yeah literally the when you told me that the next episode they introduced him so you didn't really spoil that much fair point fair point but I, I want to get back to the Suzaku thing uh, round two he, he was just trying to get Fight. to the point where he could influence Area Eleven in a positive way and let's not act like his ideals wasn't jilted after his lover was killed like his, do, do you join your enemy. So that you can, like, try and change the world later? Yes, but, like, you have to remember how long he was in the military. Like, he was gone for a number of years after he was captured, I believe, from Lelouch. Like, because when they first met, he was like, oh, Lelouch, I haven't seen you in, like, six or seven years or something, some crazy number of years. And he was like, yeah, I ended up join, joining the military and becoming an honorary Britannian. So, for all we know, he joined the military, the military before, like, that liberation Japanese front was kind of, like, really a thing and big enough. And he, no, he, he put out the liberation front by killing his dad. He my, my, my problems with Suzaku go all the way back to that moment. He, he was being selfish. He thought that stabbing his dad would end the war. I mean... It would end the war by making everyone there Britannian. So he was pretty much like handing over his whole country on a on a silver platter. True. He didn't think about the other consequences, which is the exact problem I had with Rolo. Rolo had that mindset. He was like, hey, look, they might have heard something, kill. And I'm like, are you not gonna pay attention to what could happen? Like the consequences I, of that I don't think that's a I don't think that's equivalent. Eh, I think it's equivalent. It's both both guys. He, Cause uh he was on Britannia's side, and he was killing another Britannian. And they weren't getting captured by anyone. They were just going to leak out confidential information. Whereas what Suzaku did is, we're getting captured by a foreign empire. I'm going to kill my dad, who's the leader, and then we're going to become the foreign empire once they capture us. That's – no, no, but, like, you, you're comparing, like, the outcomes. I'm comparing the action. Right. Okay. Both guys decided that, like, hey, look, if I kill this person, it will solve what's going to happen, and there's going to be no like consequences or no after effects, which is what he, which is what he did. The but show. I feel like with with Rolo, what he did, there really was like there wasn't really the con oh, there wasn't really a consequence because what whole, he did the whole team didn't want to work with them they were like oh i don't want to work with a killer that murders his own teammates like they were they were, they were actively bad mouthing this dude which made him feel even worse well you might have you might have agreed with me the consequences are very different like the consequence for what rollo did is this intel doesn't get leaked the con the consequence for what suzaku did is we we aren't japanese anymore well i, I was more comparing like um when rollo killed shirley like he was like, okay, Shirley knows too much, therefore I'm going to kill him. There's going to be no consequences. And that's kind of like what uh, Suzaku did too with his father. When in reality, that set off a ch number of chain reactions. Like, obviously, um, Suzaku... Did Shirley's death really, I like, as sad as it was, and as much as I hated it, because Sh Shirley was the real one, but did her death really, like, start any chain reactions? It... Damn, did it? The Lush created a plan specifically to get Rolo killed after that, didn't he? But it didn't happen. Like Rolo ended up dying just because he used his Gios too much, and actually ended up saving Lelouch. 
it, it didn't save me. But I'm saying that like th- that event wouldn't have happened. It might have. Rollo might have been put in a situation where he would have had to save Lelouch by doing something similar. I don't think so. I, I think it would have been a very different pathway. I, I do know. That he I feel like it wasn't as like big as a a black and white chain reaction where like Suzaku was like it, that was pretty black and white. Is either we keep fighting Britannia and possibly have a chance to like like get rid of this foreign power or like we become foreign power. <laughs> That's why I thought was so like obviously Britannia is the enemy like trying to take over your nation and he's just like oh dude i got what i'll do is i'll like just join the foreign nation and then try and like change them from within like some naruto type stuff i don't i don't think that he didn't have that mindset when he killed his father he just thought that like the war was going to be over he didn't know what the but even as he became an adult he's like i'm still going to join britannia like but with that with that being said like this is what i'm saying though he killed his father he didn't think of like the after effects and it was sort of just like oh the war will be over he didn't think about what was going to happen to the japanese afterwards rollo killed shirley and didn't think about how that was going to affect lelouch he didn't think it was going to affect lelouch that great and he thought he was doing he thought he was doing a good service just like suzaku thought he was going to be was doing a good service when in actuality that didn't happen that, that was like it was far away from the point. I just can't get behind Suzaku. Even when he like came around at the end, that just like further illustrated like how he just doesn't think he like abandoned he abandoned Japan when he uh killed his father and then he just abandoned like abandon everything him. he was fighting for up until that moment when he joined Lelouch. Because he's like, no, I would never join Lelouch. Like, zero, like, dude, he's the worst. And then he just joins him at the end. Because he he didn't really join him. He was like, hey, look. He be, like, Lelouch basically told him, like, this is my plan. And it was a good plan. If, um, yeah, yeah, it's like. He should have heard him out at the beginning. I'm sure he, his plan was good from the beginning. And then he's like, nah, I can't, I can't get down with that. Nah, I, I don't think that Lelouch had the no zero requiem plan at the very beginning. There's just no way. I'm just saying, dude, Suzaku was like such an annoying character for me. But but I feel like it added I feel like it added to the show because you needed like I was cheering for Lelouch so much that I they needed Suzaku just to be that guy that like bothered me. You have to now you have to acknowledge his growth though. He like what he did is he took in new information and then he changed he changed his viewpoint on it. He was like, yeah, we've never worked with Lelouch. Oh shit! This plan is actually a good plan. Let me work with them. Or like it was they, like in all those different battles when uh. Okay, so when they when they kidnap the Chinese Empress, and then they're uh. This is right before like Ching K joins them, because originally Ching K. Yeah, dude, he was uh, like if I was gonna rank like my top three characters in the show it would definitely be like Lelouch then, I, then I'd have Colin and then I got like a bunch of people tied for third and Chinke would be one of them uh, see that. yeah like I, as soon as you get to third I can't really decipher like who I like I definitely like Lelouch and then Colin second and then after that there's just like a bunch of people I'm down with but uh, Lelouch C2 possibly Colin uh, C2 is one of the ones I have tied for third see that I mean, I like Shirley too. I like uh, Toto, or Toto. Toto was pretty good. I did like Cornelia. Um, I liked her towards the end. I didn't like her in like the first season. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And then Sh- Shirley is man, eh, she, she's down there. She's, she's all right. Like she, I, I'm like kind of neutral with her. I mean, she's not like skilled. She's never like she's never like operating a nightmare. But I just feel like she's the. Uh, I just feel like she's the realist. I did. I did like the prez. I thought she was very good, very funny for comedy relief. Uh, yeah. But then another one tied for third is uh Sayako. Sayako, okay. She was pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, okay. So like they they kidnapped the empress, and then like Ching K and all the Chinese people are chasing them, and then Britannia just like joins the fight. Hmm. At that moment, like I definitely see like Britannia is like evil probably because i'm cheer- <laughs> probably because i'm cheering for lelouch 
And then, like, Suzaku's just, like, the head of him. I'm like, Suzaku's just such a – my man. Suzaku knows Britannia's evil. He, but he was like the face of that that army that was fighting them. They had all the knights, and then Suzaku was there. He was also the best knight. He was. He was the best knight on like the worst squad. The worst, as in like uh, the spectrum of morality. But he was out here trying to be like this the most moral knight. But he was like on the most corrupt side. Hey, so some people like it, it's like um. So if he's tr- if he's truly trying to like be a justice warrior, like why is he like on the worst squad? Because he's trying to make the squad better. I, so, so somebody- I feel I feel like I feel like by him being the face of evil in that moment, like in that specific clip, like they even get Chinke to like t- turn to their side. Or like Chinke, like dude, you gotta like we're not gonna kill the Chinese empress. Like you gotta help us out. So he like flips over and like. To be fair, though, they cornered him perfectly and for him to create, to create. And he had to make a decision. He's like, who am I going to be fighting? Am I going to be fighting the Black Knights right now? Or am I going to be fighting? Well, I guess he didn't really have a choice because the Chinese people were shooting on him. Yeah, yeah they would have mow his ass down. So he really didn't have a choice. Yeah, but I feel like even though he didn't have a choice, that choice was the correct one. Yeah, that, that's, that's subjective. Like in Suzaku's mind, he's making the correct choice. Let's not forget, he also helped Lelouch save Nunnally. Yeah, he just, like, flip, flip-flops so much on, like, what he believes in, I think. And that, see, that, that's, that's someone willing to take in new information, basing his next decision off of that information. That's someone who's stuck in their ways and is unwilling to change their mindset. He, he had that growth mindset. I feel like there's a lot of characters that adapted that didn't flip-flop as much as he did. Charles didn't adapt. V2. I, I, I didn't say all of them. I said a lot. The end of the show is crazy because, like, a lot of characters that I liked were, like, fighting each other. They were? Well, Colin was fighting Lelouch. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that was part of, like... Um... And then Suzaku joined Lelouch, which means, like, a lot of characters like Chinke and uh, Toto, they were all fighting Suzaku. Well, I mean, I mean, they were always fighting Suzaku, but they were they were fighting Lelouch. I did, I did like that. I liked And how, then I was like, do I have to cheer for Suzaku now since I'm, like, cheering for Lelouch? And I, I, I didn't like that. What? But, I was like, bro, the two most powerful characters, they are going to take everyone down. Yeah, but I, I did not like Suzaku, so I'm like, do I have to cheer for him in this moment? Like, I, I forget the truth for him. He, he went to the side that you wanted him to go to at the very beginning. Now you but I'm telling to- you, I liked a lot of those other characters, like Colin and Chinke, and they were on the other side, so I was like, do I like Lelouch enough to trump all these guys? And and the answer was yes. But exactly, see, it was, it was the too. I was like, yeah. I, like, I, I wanted Lelouch to win. I was like, hey, let's see how far he can take it. I think he did win. You were asking me if I liked the ending. I think he did win. Oh yeah. So like, the ending was definitely very symbolic. Uh, so wait, did you watch the the entire like last episode, even the after credit scene? No, I don't think I watched the well. I thought the after credits was just playing that that song, which uh, I, I had to look them up. I, it was Ali Project. The, the, their songs were like bangers on. They on were. <laughs> so you didn't see C2 at the end? I mean, you can tell me. I'll go back and watch it after this. Wait, wait. It, it, might, it, it might just even be worth for me to pull it up so you can see it. I mean, I'll pull it up then. I'll just watch it afterwards, dude. We'll, we'll... It's, it's only five seconds because I want to talk about that part. And I, I want to ask you a question that directly relates to that scene. I can't ask you that question if you don't see it. Uh, I just hope it pulls up. Yeah, do you like Code Geass ending scene? Here, I can pause it right now and then resume. All right, that works. But right. that scene was one of the most important scenes in the creation of Code Geass. Uh, I mean, I'll have to go back. Like, we didn't watch the whole thing because I told you I remembered it, but she was just pretty much, like, saying, like, that she wasn't being isolated, I guess. 
and then she said, right, Lelouch. And then like, my question was, do you think he was alive and was the person driving that cart or not? No, I think he definitely died. So it said, so, um, unless there's like another movie or something I didn't see where he's alive, but I, I get to that later. But basically popular theory said that he didn't die and he didn't die because, um, you remember when he, remember when he uses, um, Gios on Charles and Charles shot himself in the heart, but then he took V2's code and then he like turned immortal. Yeah. So, uh, he took Vito's code and he turned immortal. Um, and essentially what happens is when you take your master's, when, the, when you take your master's code, you become immortal, but you lose your Gios. So Charles was immortal, but he didn't have his Gios anymore. Um, when Lelouch killed Charles, people were questioning what happened to Charles' code. Like the, the code that Charles took from V2, what happened to that code? I don't know. Exactly. No one knows. So what they're saying is the code goes to like whoever killed him. Like if Lelouch would have killed C2, Lelouch gets C2's code. Well, since Lelouch killed Charles, Lelouch got Charles' code, which is why the name of the title is called Code Gios. So um, Lelouch is now in charge of the immortal code and he's, he still has his Gios. Well, what they're saying is that um why wouldn't he lose his gios then what's that why wouldn't he have lost his gios when he killed charles because charles wasn't his original master it's like when you take the code from uh, so he, he took the code from v2 what's that he took the code from v2 or uh, c2 yeah. well if he would have took the code from c2 he would have lost his gios but he didn't he took his code from charles who took it from v2 which is a different code so that, that allowed him to have pro that allowed him to um, have the code and have his Gios. I thought you were saying you could just take it from your ma the master that gave it to you, the or the person that gave it to you. So like yeah, well the, I mean the thing is like you didn't remember when the C 2s wish was to die in order and give her code to Lelouch. Yeah. Yeah, like the the person living immortal, like it's the same thing. Like C two got tricked into like taking the code from like her partner. They obviously want the person to take the code from them. Like basically, C basically the woman wanted to curse C two with her code. Yeah, I, I, I got all that. So are you saying you're saying you think Lelouch is immortal and C two is immortal? Yes, because what happens is like what happens is like the code goes linear. So what happens if you take a code that's not linear? Like V2's code had nothing to do with C2, but yet... I just thought it disappeared. I didn't think that Lelouch got it. That meant Lelouch must have been immortal that whole time. No, because... Uh, so the thing is that, like, um, Charles didn't become immortal until after he was killed by Lelouch. After he got, like, shot himself in the chest, that's when he was like, I don't have my gas anymore. I'm now immortal. And you saw the code appear on his hand. So... Lelouch didn't get the immortal code until he was killed. When was he killed? When he got stabbed by Suzaku. That's when C2 took his body, and now they're lying undercover. And like, she, he was the one driving the carriage, she was on top. So she was like, Now I'm not alone, right, Lelouch? And then she like looks up, signifying that she's looking at the cabin driver. Okay. But uh, did he know that that was going to happen when Suzaku stabbed him? That's what they're saying. Possibly, if he's the one that killed Charles, because he he knows about the code, he knows about the code, and he knows about the Gios. When he killed Charles, and then Charles woke back up and explained it to him. Then so they just lay low, don't tell anyone. Would he tell Natalie in that case? He wouldn't. But the thing is, he could he could have not. But the thing is, he could have not known. And then it's not like he has control over it. So all of a sudden, he wakes up. C 2s like, yeah, you got V 2s code. Okay, that's cool. I didn't like interpret that he was still alive. See that that's what's like so funny about the community. It's community. Half the people think he's alive and half the people think he wasn't alive. I was one of the people I, I thought he died, like but now that you're telling me that I guess. But yeah, but it's like who, I still think it's confusing how he got the immortality and still has his Gios. So th basically the immortality doesn't kick in until after you die. So Charles still had his Gios until he died. And then um 
C2 didn't get the code until she was stoned to death. If you saw her in her, um, if you saw in her memories, that, that's how she got the code. But so who do you, who do you think was driving the cab, the cabby thingy? If it I was, guess it would have to be Lelouch because I don't know, I don't know who else she would be hanging out with like that. It could be just like a random person. She decides to like. See, see, she's not out here like hanging out with random people. She's like chilling in the in the back eating pizza the whole yeah. time. Dude doesn't know it's dude doesn't know uh, that she's up there. And there was like some symbolism with that crane, the paper mache crane. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The but, origami. Yeah, the origami thing that was given to Lelouch um, from Nunnally in one of the like one of the earlier episodes. So it yep. was like, how did she get a possession of that? Unless. Lelouch had it. Do you think Lelouch was holding on to that the whole time? I mean, his, especially after he thought that she died, I would, I would not be um, surprised if he was, since like most of his plan did have to do with like saving Nunnally. So, uh, what, what Gias would you want? I would either want. I would have to. I would either want Charles or I would want Lucius. What about you? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a pretty easy decision. I would just want Lucius, but I feel like Charles is just like a worse version of Lucius because he can pretty much like by putting false memories in people, you can essentially like get them to do what you want. But Lelouch is just like a more direct version of getting people to do what you want. Yeah, but also the Lucius can run out and he can only tell them to do one thing. Yeah, I guess there's a limit that you can only use it on a person once. Yeah, and like his was more like um because he made that woman carve into the wall to see how long his gills would last. Um I think we actually said how long it lasted, but I forgot what it was. But also what well, obviously lasted like for I he was getting uh, Suzaku to live like throughout the whole show. Yeah, it was a certain number of days. I forgot how long they said it lasts. It was like maybe two years or something. But um, the thing is, his can, he can he can only say a command and have the eye contact, whereas like he can only do one command. Charles, on the other hand. Charles can like make you do multiple things with the false memories. Like this, this dude, this dude uses Gios on Nunnally, and she was blind the entire show because she thought she was blind. I still like Lelouch's, I think. I mean, you even, you even, why, why are you gonna debate me on this? You even, you even said that you would want his. Wait, well, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm saying that like the other ones are like, I, I'm. Other ones are comparable to like being able to beat Lelouch's. Like, uh, if because if Lelouch was of average intelligence, actually, I might take Miles. No, that would be the worst. What do you, you mean? Saw, you saw what happened to him. He had to pretty much be in isolation. Yeah, but that, that's because like, dude, I don't care to read everyone's minds because like I'm sure. Like, you saw when he was at, like, the library. Like, some people are just, like, thinking about some, like, nonsense that you don't need to know about. That's true, but, like, remember Mal had it when he was a little kid, and then, like, he kind of, like, overused it. He didn't really, like, learn how to control it, whereas, like, the Lelouch got his in a um, totally different setting. Uh, well, it's never been a power I've desired to read yeah. minds. This, uh, this almost goes back to our uh, future diary conversation, like, where I, where I told you, I just want the power where I can, like, hypnotize people. Exactly, which, yeah, you, you have the power to hypnotize people. But you you meet any other Gios loser, um, Gios user, you're, you're probably going to lose. But and, he didn't lose. No, Mao whooped this dude's ass multi on multiple occasions. Like, he was, he was not going to beat Mao. The only reason he beat Mao was because, like, he's twice, he's almost as smart as Shikamaru. Like, you would, would you have came up with that idea to beat him? When you saw the way he beat Mao, he beat so many people just by like pre-recording the conversation like I, I already know what this guy's gonna say to me so he just pre <laughs> i thought that was like really funny exactly would you have thought of that way to beat him and then he beat him the second time by using his geos on his side uh, the way i would have beat him is i would have just had someone come with me 
and just like think about some random stuff the whole time because he has to hear everybody's thoughts. Uh, no, remember he was only he can only focus on one person if he wanted to. I don't quite remember. I just remember when he was at the library, he was hearing everybody. He was here, but you remember when he was talking to a pre recorded Lelouch, he didn't notice that like 30 dudes from the police force came up to him and then like was right behind him before it was too late. So when he focuses, he can, he, he can only fo- he can focus on one person if he needs to. I would still just never want that one. I, 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 I think I'd stick with Lelouch's. I guess his dad's is cool because he can use it multiple times on people. I'm assuming, right? That's a good question. Um, I, I actually don't know. It's very interesting. I need, I need to see how many times or like who he actually used it on besides Lenny and uh, Lelouch. Well, I don't. I actually don't remember if that was the case for everybody. I, that's what I was going to ask you. Could you only use your Geos once on people? Yeah, it depends on what Geos' power, power is. Like, because I don't remember if. Uh, no, because I guess uh, Rolo did use it on the loose twice. Yeah, like Rolo's it, it, like freezes time, so it's not like I think that only used it once was specifically only for the Lucius. And then, and if, and if me and you come into a battle, and I and I have Rolo's. Kill Gios, you're done for. I, I froze. T- I froze you. What, what are you gonna do? You can't use your Gios on me if you can't see me. I mean, he ended up beating him just because Rollo didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, Rollo, Rollo didn't pull the trigger, and like there was like some other variables, like them like supposed to be brothers. But in well, minute, Lelouch could also use it on like mirrors and stuff. So if I knew you were coming after me, I would just like have a way of like trying to see you without you seeing me. I would, I would freeze the whole area. You wouldn't know where I was at, though. You could just be freezing some inanimate I'll, object, which you can't even do. No, I'll just be free. I'll freeze the area, and then I'll just walk around until I find you. And then I'll just, like... It didn't last that long, though. He can make it last as long as, like... And your heart stops every time you use it. Guess what I'm saying. So, like, his heart stops. So, I guess it depends on how long he can survive with his heart being stopped. Um, and we have to remember this, the kid, this kid's like 4 or 13, you know, I'm a little bit. I just older. feel like that's a huge weakness to your Gios is that your heart stops. I've, I've only need, if my heart only stops for five seconds before I can find you. I can, like, yeah, but how many times can you do that before it has like consequences when you're not even using your Gios? It might just like give you a like chronic illness to be, but to be fair though, like he was using it pretty frequently and it looked like. Well, then the time they end up killing him, like the last time he used it, he def- he used it like 20, 25 times in a row, like repeatedly. But it was clearly like overdrive. But all the other times we saw him in the show, he didn't really show any signs of strain. Yeah, but over the course of a lifetime, like you said, he was still young. So what about the time you're in your 20s? By the time you're in your 30s? Like having a good heart. Keep, keep, keep the cardio up. What, 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 it's like saying, what are you going to do when you've already used your Gios and like everybody you know? Like, it's like you can't. You just, just got to make sure that you like give them a command like that's going to be useful for their whole life cycle. Like, I, he, he found a way to use the one he gave to Suzaku to his advantage. When he was telling yeah, him to live, at first it was kind of like. When he initially did it, it obviously helped him because it got him out of that situation where he was about to kill him. And then, but, and then later on, it proved to be a problem because he couldn't get rid of Suzaku because he just kept <laughs> living. But, but then, but then he eventually like spun it to where it worked to his advantage. So he's got to make sure you give him a command that's gonna like you can use to your advantage. I just feel like there's like too many, a little bit too many holes in that. You just got to use it to. It was like I was telling you when you're you using. Somebody did a euphemia. He accidentally used it on her, and then guess what happened? You could say that about anyone. Like if you had the one that read minds, you could accidentally be reading everyone's mind if you can't control yeah, it. Yeah, but that doesn't kill half the Japanese people. And then like I can, I can always turn it off. He accidentally used it on euphemia. He didn't turn it off though. Are you talking about Rolos? What's that? You talking about Rolos or Mao's? Because Mao didn't turn it off. Mao had to keep a voice of like. Um, of C2's voice inside his head, but his was like repeated use when he was a kid and when he didn't really know. He 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 got um he basically overpowered him when he was a kid, and then like it was basically too late for him. 
because he was way too young. But his doesn't cause like half the Japanese people to be murdered. Um, Rolo's doesn't cause half the Japanese people to be murdered. Uh, Lush accidentally used it on Euphemia and he, he couldn't take it back. He was, he was either kill her or allow her to kill Japanese people. Like, imagine, imagine. Oh, I, I did mean to, to bring up that I, I am glad that he took her out like pretty quickly. I mean, I guess like she did issue the command, but like he, he didn't allow her to live with that guilt very long. <laughs> so I, res- I respect him for doing that because like I feel like put Suzaku in that same situation like he has the Gias he accidentally tells I mean this would obviously never happen but the, you put him in that situation he tell he accidentally tells Euphemia to kill a bunch of he he would probably be like running around trying to get her to snap out of it for like half the show whereas mm-hmm. whereas Lelouch is like all right like I will mourn for you like I definitely like messed up and I, I will I will bear the sin, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out so you don't have to live with this guilt. He would, but Suzaku also wouldn't brag about his abilities. Like there, there's no reason for Luch to say that sentence. There's, there's no reason for him to like form those words in his mouth to be like, oh, I can make you tell. Like for example, it brought out that specific example. Suzaku wouldn't do that. He would. He would be I, like, I could see Suzaku doing something like that. No, nah, he'd be like, like if Suzaku had the the gias that uh that uh. C2 had, he, he could be like, I- I'm going to win you over, but you know, like I could just make you fall in love with me if I wanted to. Like he, he would say some garbage like that. Could, but that, that would be like, that would be harmless. That would be like, uh, no, then, then it works. And then like, she's like fell in love with him and he's like, Oh God, this is, this is not what I, this is not what I wanted. Cause now you're like a drone and I can't even have a conversation with you. Cause you don't think rationally. Cause you're just like infatuated with me. But the, the thing is, he Suzaku was saying something that he inevitably wants. Luigi didn't even want to kill the Japanese, yet he used that as an example. That would be the difference. Suzaku, Suzaku would, like, probably wouldn't want her to like be uh, brainlessly like doing. No, no, no. He would. He wouldn't want her to be like brainlessly in love with him. But he'd be like, "Oh, I can make you fall in love with me," because he still wants her to love him. Um, Lelouch was like, Lelouch did was not going to like murder the Japanese, and he still used that as an example. Is the difference? Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it more, C C two's Gios might be cool. I just do. I would have to know what like. I don't. I don't know if they would like love you so much to where you could like tell them to give you space. <laughs> if, you, if you love me enough, give me some space. Yeah, I mean, like if if you could do stuff like that, then I think that that Gios might be the best because you're as, they're essentially going to do whatever you want because they're that much in love with you. There's, I think there was, um, there's some other Gias that the little kids had that I can't remember. I think one of them, like, had the same one as Lelouch. His was a little bit different. I do remember that one, too. I think he was the only one that actually used his. Yeah, and he just, like, told that driver to, like, the driver of the Nightmare to do whatever he wanted. Um, you could have had, like, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the woman, I forgot who, Miriam's. Gias. Was she Marianne? Influenced? Marianne, yeah. Was she mom? Influenced her Gias in like the mom. Nah, that's, that's a dumb one. That was a dumb one. I was like, damn. That's the only way, that's the only thing you can use. Sucks to suck. But I'm thinking. Well, Luke got over that pretty quick. He's like, oh, my mom wants, my mom's on the same side as Charles. Like, F that. Like, he did, yeah, that was a pretty quick decision. He was like, hold up, wait a minute. Yeah, he's like, I've been doing all this, like, it was mainly for Nanali, but it was kind of like to avenge his mother, too. And he's like, so I've been, like, doing all this for you, and this is what you want? Like, nah. That was tough love. I'm, I'm trying to think that, uh, wait, what was, um, what about, uh, crap, what was his name? What, what was the orange boy's name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Could his count as a Gios? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, it was definitely a Gias. I uh I did not like him in the first season, but I, I actually he uh he grew on me in the second season. I actually when I first watched it, I thought he was gonna be uh I thought Lelouch was not gonna win in the end, and I thought it was gonna be because of him. <laughs> he was he was, a, he was a good character. He uh That was like early on in season two, and then I quickly saw that he was like 
once uh once Lelouch got him on his side, I thought he was a great asset. I thought he became like a powerful character. I, I still like that he was like that orange boy reputation he carried with him, and he was like trying to go after me each time. I, I really enjoyed that, yeah. but I, I did like his Gios canceler too. Yeah, I thought that was gonna be like Lelouch's undoing because I thought he would just cancel everything, but then he got him on his side, so I thought that was key. That was key because I was for I would think that would be, I mean, in my opinion, I feel like that's Lelouch's greatest weakness would just be someone that could cancel all the commands he's given. Well, I mean, not only could he cancel the commands, he can cancel, like, the freeze time. He was, he was canceling everything. Yeah, but I'm just saying mainly for Lelouch's end goal, if he could cancel all the Gias's, all his commands. That's true. That pretty much renders his power useless. So once he got him on his side, it's like... I mean, but he still, he still had, like, a pretty decent way to defeat him. He, he brought him to his knees before he got him to his side. Yeah, with that, uh, whatever that That's sonar cool. cannon thing was. Yeah, the uh, I forgot what it was called, but his his. So maybe I would choose the Gias canceler, but I feel like that would be boring. No, nah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want that because that's essentially that's essentially like not picking a Gias. Yeah, but you can't. You can't beat me. Like you, you try to command me, cancel. Yeah, but I would rather have a Gios and then have you cancel it than have that Gios. Uh, I don't know. It depends. Like, are we, if we're in a fight for a death, I'd much rather have mine. All right. If we're if if I'm fighting someone and I have a Gios, I all can the Gios use... users are in an arena, and it's like, who's going to come out on top? Well, who in that situation would be whoever is like just the best fighter. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Gios on that point. Does it though? Because so who's the best fighter out of all the Gios users? It it might be <laughs> Jeremiah with his like his cyborg arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but then, uh, but then, but then, uh, Lelouch would just use his like sonar disruption thing, bring him to his knees. So then, who's the strongest after that? I could probably see uh, Charles just like skull bashing some people. No, no, no. But like, it's it's us. Like, all of us are in the arena. Like, people with Gios in the real world. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sit in the corner, and whoever like tries to come after me, I'm gonna just cancel their Gios. Yeah, but then they would just I'll, I'll you let would all just the be in a, a fist fight after that. What's that? You'd be in a fist fight after that. Yeah, but like, I'm gonna I'm keep running around. I'm gonna let all the Gios users fight each other because they're gonna be using their Gios on each other. Like, ro- like whoever has like the free that's, power that's power. always the one you pick is the one where you could just hide. You're like when we were doing Mirai Nikki. You're like I want the I want the diary where I could just like make fake copies and hide. <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like that, that's a pretty good power to have. If everyone's trying to kill each other. I'm just saying the reason I wouldn't want that one is because all right, let's like I I pick the Gios I want. I would probably get Lelouch's, and then I come up to you and you can cancel it. So it's like a net zero. That, that's <laughs> that's. That's what your Gios does. Your Gios is pretty much like not having one. I'd rather just like have one. But but then all of a sudden I netted yours and then the guy that has like the freaking time Gios freezes time. Now you're stuck in space. Everyone else else is stuck in space. And I'm like, oh shit, cancel. Now I'm walking around like, all right, who, who don't want to beat a team up with the dude using the freeze time? And then we just beat the shit out of everybody else that like, can. It's like some Suzaku stuff, just assuming you can just team up with people and <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I can't team up with them. I'm like, hey, look, seven dudes are frozen. I'm not frozen. Do you really want to come after the dude that's not frozen? All right, so pretty much your Gios just turns everyone into a normal person again. I would rather have a Gios where I actually like have the power that I can like manipulate people. Or but in an arena, it doesn't matter. You're not lasting long. Okay, I guess you can manipulate the other Gios users, but you just hope another one of the Gios users doesn't come after no, you. No, I think, I think your Gios is very useful. I just wouldn't want it because I feel like all you're doing is making other people like as if they didn't have a Gios, whereas I would want my power to be where I actually have a power to do something awesome. Your power, your, pa- your Gios is making it so people aren't awesome I want a Gios that like makes me awesome. And then if you happen and then if you happen to make it to where I'm not awesome anymore, 
then I'm just <laughs> on the same level as you because you you can't use your geass to like actually do anything other than like, <laughs> but, that's what I'm it's like if you choose your geass what would you do if i just followed you around and canceled your geass every then we would time? be the same then we would be, we would be the same because you would not be using your geass to do anything cool other than to make sure i'm not doing anything cool and, and that that would be funny which by proxy would make myself think i'm cool your geass is cool if you team up with some other geass user you're like a good sidekick the perfect sidekick and i can be you you are you you're you're that gear the gear that jeremiah had made him like the perfect sidekick because you could whoever you're teaming up with could use their gear and then you can just make sure no one else messes with you guys i think that but that means he's always on the winning side whereas your gear technically you got like what what is what charles yeah, but if I I think if I catch you alone, like without your your uh, your Batman, I cancel your Gios. <laughs> yeah, but then okay, you cancel my Gios. Like that doesn't advantage you. It just makes it so I don't have an advantage. Exactly. So like in turn, I guess that it, it advantages you. But your 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 Gios makes it so everyone's on an even playing field, whereas all the other Gioses actually like give you a advantage but yours just makes sure every everyone's on an evil even playing field yeah, I'm, fine, I'm fine with that i would rather have one see with mine we're going up against you best case scenario i can like use my geos to defeat you worst case scenario we're on the same playing field so flip that around for you best case scenario we're on an even I playing win. field best case scenario we're on an even playing field the worst case scenario someone uses their geos on you what you can't? I'm, he's ungeassable though. You can't geass him at all. What if you get the jump on him? You still can't use your geass on him. And I think it's it's like automatically counts it. Like the it's it's like. Um, then the best and worst case scenario are the same for you. It's exactly. Just, it's an even playing field. <laughs> Which my what my worst case scenario is equivalent to your best case scenario. Yeah. So like in, in no in yeah. No so scenario. why would I want that? In, in no scenario can you win because I just cancel it. Like, so you, you have no best case scenario. My best case scenario is I could use my Gios on other people. That's true. I, I just, like, let you take them out. And uh, I'll sign up whichever Gios user is the strongest one. And then we take out the last Gios user. All right. If you just want to be a sidekick, that's cool. Hey, but would I rather be a sidekick with a dub or not a sidekick and dead? I guess that goes back to our Kevin Durant debate. I got maybe, maybe all things can come back to that. That's true. All right. So, with with, with that with that being said, would you rather be cut from your high school team, or would you rather no, I'm go not, to the NBA finals and win? I don't understand how that's relevant to what we're talking about. As KD, would you rather stay in the same place and lose, or would you rather be the perfect sidekick and get two dubs and two rings? So I guess uh, Kevin Durant is like Suzaku. No, he's like me, like the, the Gios canceler. Yeah, but isn't he also like Suzaku? He's like gonna get get rid of Japan, join Britannia, and get the dub. But like he did, but Katie didn't flip flop. He only like went to one team, then won. So he'd be like a he'd be like a Jeremiah. Kevin Durant. Yeah, like he, he just flipped once and then like stayed with that and won. Well, he flipped like, again. He flipped again. He's on the Nets now. Yeah, but that's because like uh, Draymond like ran him out. That's it's it's like um after uh, Draymond, I don't like, I don't know their whole drama, but yeah. Well, he Katie flipped once. He stayed, which is like because technically he was the Gios canceler. Katie canceled the whole league when he went to the Warriors because he was like we're stacking his eyes. Like he he made it so. Basically, no one had been playing field except for them. Are there any other points in Code Geass we need to talk about? Uh, let me see. That last scene, very important, very symbolic. That scene was so important. It brought back a 10-year hiatus for Code Geass and spanned three more movies. So I, I highly recommend you watching those movies. Yeah, I haven't seen them yet because it, it took everything in me just to like finish that whole show in a week. 
Yeah, the, the movies are pretty good. It's um, it's a good thing you watch the show though. It basically reiterates the show, but it changes a couple things. Um, it's still pretty good. I do like the ending of it. Um, <clears throat> but basically, there was like such a uh, there was such a divide on where the like Lelouch lived. Like if Lelouch lived and Lelouch died, the um, the authors said it's like kind of up to interpretation. But they basically brought back these three movies and they made it so it was obvious that Lelouch lived and they told the story of of like how it would be if he like lived through all that yeah I think I talked about all the characters I liked um I mean Sayako was definitely cool she 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 was like Shirley where she was just down no matter what it's true uh what about Ogi uh, we didn't even talk about Ogie at all. Ogie, um, who was the other dude that was like... Zero is my best friend. Yeah, Zero. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but uh, he reminds me of... Uh, I think his name was Corpus from uh, Berserk. Oh, yeah. I think his name was Corpus, too. Yeah, I, that guy reminded me of him a lot. I, I can see that. I can see that. Because he was like trying to take Guts out in his tent or something when he was sleeping, and then Casca's like... Now you can't take out guts because Griffith doesn't want you to. And then towards like the end of the series, he's like, Berserk's the leader. He's like the best. Like, <laughs> I mean, damn, what was his name? They're not uh, gut, guts. Is the leader? I can't remember. Can't believe I can't remember his name. He was he was a funny dude. He uh, I, he couldn't really step up to the plate, but they didn't say his name that much. They did it. I don't think so. Because no one really addressed him. <laughs> well, I think they, they addressed him. He was like, he was taking out all the girls and spending the new money. Um, no, they said his name a few times, but most of the time they were talking about him, they're like, he's quite dim. He's like, that's what, uh, oh, dude, uh, we didn't even talk about Lloyd. Lloyd, I did like Lloyd. Yeah, he, he was one of the tied for third for me. There's like a whole bunch of people tied for third. He was a, he was an earl. He he was very interesting. I liked Rakshada too. I liked both of them. Rakshada like Rock was pretty cool. She kind of like came out of nowhere. I, I feel like they could have gave her like either a better build up or a set of better foundation for her because they, they didn't really dive into um, them two's past. But like it was expected, they kind of had like a science of rivalry. Yeah, that uh, what's her name, Cecile? Like said, there wasn't really like much of the story to it. So I wonder if they were just like rivals right from the start. They were I like they that. like they get introduced, bam, they're like they're rivals. It was it was more than that. It was actually something that was done because I read it up, up on their past, but I forgot what it was. Uh, okay, yeah, I didn't really have time to read much of the fandom. I, the only parts that I read were like I didn't remember how the night of a uh, one died. But then as soon as I remembered it, yeah, I remember, like, Susaku kind of kicked his ass a little bit. Yeah, we didn't talk about his Gias. He had the, uh, he could, like, see in the future. Oh, yeah, that was. That but was obviously, good. that's a pretty weak Gias if, like, you can still get killed by someone who can't see the future. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, his Gia like, killed by somebody who had been affected by Gias. Yeah, I guess uh, the lived command trumps seeing in the future. Yeah, I mean, I thought that, like, because his Gias didn't really, um, it let him see into the future, but not by much. So it, it was just one of those things where it, I, feel, I feel like his was on the lower end of the spectrum. I like, would if, rather have that one than read people's minds because I feel like it almost does the same thing. Mm, I don't think so, because I feel like if if he had if he had the ability to read Suzaku's mind in that moment, it would have been like equivalent to him being able to see in the future. It when wouldn't, because I can be like, "Hey, look, Matt, what's your favorite food?" You're not thinking of your favorite food. I now know what that is. Whereas, like, if I say, "Hey, Matt, what's your favorite food?" There is no like future in that. Like, I guess I can see the future, but it'd be like ten seconds ahead and. It was always like the future of the actions, not the future of what the person said. Yeah, I just think I would prefer that than to like being crumbled to my knees by hearing everybody's thoughts. 
I, I think you're underestimating how much like this this kid this kid was obviously like fucked up from when he was a kid, and it like amplified with his gias. But did that happen in like an episode of like Fairly Odd Parents too? He could like read people's minds, and then he got crumbled to his knees by just hearing everyone's. It seems like that's like the the common theme is if you can read people's minds, you just like get flooded with everyone's thoughts and you just crumble. It's only because he was a kid. I, if he he had the ability to like um, master it, like everybody else mastered the geosses, and he didn't lose control of it, he would be fine. Like if he the thing is, he was trying to read everybody's mind. If he just tried to read like two or three people's minds. And like, kind of like stayed at like below 10, he'd be good. I just felt like Lelouch is like, he just wore a mask. So that's how he like cover. And he wore the contact lenses. That's how. That's yeah. That like, so that's an easy way to cover up your Vios if you lose control. I don't know how I'm supposed to cover up like hearing everyone's voices if I lose control. Yes, he, he, he was uh, deeply in love with C2 and he's used her voice. I, I wouldn't want to be hearing the same stuff all that would be annoying too you tell me you're gonna walk around do, do you do that right now where you walk around and just listen to the same thing all day you know you like, can listen you can listen to music like he was specifically in love with c2 so he just wanted to hear her voice but like music podcast tv shows there's a lot of things you can listen to in order to drown up noise it would like force you to be like introverted what's that it would force you to be introverted i didn't necessarily force you to be introverted if you have to always be listening and stuff and can't talk to people because you can't you can control it. You can definitely talk to people. You gotta isolate him first. Because he had it since he was a little kid. Hey, if he got his code, if he got his gias around the time Lelouch got his gias, guarantee he'd be completely different. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that character didn't stick around long because I thought he was like kind of annoying. He was kind of annoying, but like he wasn't too bad of a character. No, I thought if he if he was like a pivotal point and like pivotal character in the show, I probably would have dropped it. Now, what do you mean? He had a, you didn't like his. He had a tragic backstory, rags to riches, and he just wanted to be with C two. When he, when he took up that chainsaw, he was like, "I'm gonna put you back in a suitcase and take you with me." I was like, "Yo, he's ride or die," and right now she's gonna die. Like, dude, no, that was like a. He was like a Obito. Was he though? We're freaking out over a girl that didn't even like him, as as you would say. But but she she betrayed him. She cut him deep after she pretended to love him. I don't think she it, pretended. I think she loved him at first, and then she's like, "This guy's like not gonna like fulfill my contract." Ex- exactly. She used him. Ren didn't use Obito, but C two used this guy, and then tossed him away like yesterday's trash. I don't know if she used him because she gave him what he wanted. She like she's like, I do love you, but after loving you for so long, you haven't proven like any value. See, but the thing is, and like relationships, like when people fall in love, they like they're like supposed to grow together. But like he wasn't growing; he was kind of just like, growing. Huh? His gyoza was growing. Nah, he was becoming more, more of a shut in, more useless. And she was just so, looking so at him. His, his gyoza wasn't growing stronger, is what you're saying. Huh? Well, his gyoza was growing stronger. Yeah, but actually his gyoza going stronger was his downfall. It's true, it's true. But he's, he got, they, he got too strong. There's still some growth in that. And to be fair, like C2 didn't tell him the terms of the contract, and she didn't tell Lelouch the terms of the contract either. So did she not? I just thought we like didn't see that part to kind of create like a mystery in the story about what it was. No, no, she didn't. Like it, so the the dialogue they don't, they don't show the conversation. Whenever he gets his gios, he's like, "All right, I accept your contract." That, so there that was obviously it. some sort of conversation that we just didn't hear. Oh, wait, did you watch it in the sub or dub? Dub. I watched it in both, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that like whatever you see or whatever was said. Um, that was the conversation. It was like, hey, look, I will give you this power, but you have to fulfill the contract. And he's like, okay, I accept the contract. I feel like Lelouch wouldn't have done Because then even Lelouch, like, later on in the show, before you find out what the contract is, he's like, I haven't remembered our promise. I will fulfill the contract. Yeah, and he, he still doesn't know what it is. But it was like, 
hey, do you want to fulfill? Yeah, how are you gonna fulfill something you don't know what it is? No, no, but it was like, hey, do you want to fulfill this contract or do you want to get shot by thirty bullets? Hey, uh, Christian, I'll give you twenty bucks if you fulfill my contract. Yeah, sure. So you hand me the twenty bucks because she handed him the power first, and then you tell me what you want to do. So you, have, you have no idea what I want you to do, but you'll take twenty bucks and agree to do it. Yeah. I see no problem with that. But the thing is, if the contract I want is for you to give me a million dollars, but I just don't tell you that. So I'll give you $20 and then. But then it's like, okay, you now have a period. There's a waiting period for you to get your million dollars. I'll give it to you when I have $50 million. I would definitely give you $20 if you agree to give me a million dollars some point in the future. Oh, yeah. All right. When I get a $50 million, I'll give it to you. That's the stipulation of the contract. So if I never reach $50 million, then you're not going to get your million dollars. But. I mean, I, I would take that because, like, I would be turning $20 into a million. That, that works for me. Or turning $20 into zero. Exactly. So I, we, can, we can do that. <laughs> All right. I would I get 50 do that. Million, like, million is not going to hurt. All right. Next, next time I see you, I'll give you $20. All right. Bet. And then going back to, we have to look at the terms of this contract. His alternative was getting shot and killed, which he obviously didn't want to do. Maybe I just kind of I thought there was just some more there was a deeper conversation and that we just didn't the audience just didn't hear it. Oh no 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 that was like it was literally like she said hey look if I give you these eyes you're gonna have to fill this contract for me he said I yeah I understand that's what you're saying but I I don't think that that's not how I'm interpreting it. I'm I'm telling you like that's how it's supposed to be interpreted because um, I don't think I don't know that you can say that because like they didn't show what actually happened. What, this is why you need to watch the sub first because the sub kind of like basically tells you. And then, well, even he, even in the sub, it's just like them trying to translate the Japanese, which is what essentially the dub is. So I feel like unless we both know Japanese, we're not really going to know. No, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. It's different. Because <laughs> it's like because uh, even, even even when I'm watching One Piece. They clear like when I'm watching it sometimes in the sub and when I'm watching it in dub, they'll take what the Japanese people are saying in like the sub version and they'll add cussing words where I know like the Japanese version didn't have those cussing words. Or it could have. But it's like the dub is always like interpreted interpreted a little bit differently than the sub. All right. But also, with that with that being said, if you notice in one of the later scenes, when he like wants to um when he wants to take on Cornelia, he was uh, C two was like, "I can't let you go because you just have to fulfill the contract." And he's like, "Well, I still want to go because this is what I want to do." And she was like, "I can't have you dying before you fulfill it." And you can tell by the conversation that he still doesn't know what the contract is because if he knew the contract is, he probably would have said, "Yeah, I'm not going to kill you." It's clear throughout the show that he does not know like her contract is um, for like basically him to like stop her from being alone and then basically taking her life. I'll have to watch it again. Like you've seen it more times than me, but watching it all the way through, I didn't really think there was a part where like, I thought he was oblivious to what he was supposed to ultimately do. Yeah, so if you, if, yeah, watch it again and you'll see that he's actually oblivious the entire time or it's not really something he's focused on. All right, I'll watch it again. All, all right. Again. Is that everything? Yeah, what uh you said this is your favorite anime, so would it get a ten for you? Oh yeah. Eleven out of ten. Yeah, I mean what did I say? I said I liked Yu Yu Hakusho the most. Like I I might like this more. It is like fresh in my mind, so I might be like, Oh, I, I saw this one the most recently, so this is the most awesome anime out there, but I don't know, it might be. I'll have to I'll have to watch some more, but like it definitely top of my list. Like give it, top give it top three for sure. Hey, give it a watch. Look at it in the sub. Question: I can the dub. Does it have like um, excerpts at the top that explains it to you? Like Not during really. some of the episodes, they have like if like a year went by or something, they'll say what year it is. But I think it's within the sub because I, I watch like so. I will usually flip flop between when I'm watching it in. Um, like sometimes when you're watching it in sub. 
uh, I'll have the subtitles and then like in the upper left or right hand corner, it'll provide you like a, um, a longer description of what they're talking about and it gives you more insight into it. But that might've been just like for the movies because you should also watch the three movies. Um, I just finished the series like, what are we, like two, two months ago? Just finished the series two months ago because um, the three movies was kind of like a side continuation of the story and the movies are pretty good too. All right, yeah, so be sure to check those out. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a great, great show. I'm glad you recommended it. Uh, hey. uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to check out some more. Uh, what, what do you want to watch next, do you know? I, was gonna watch, I sent you the recommendation list. Um, yeah, was there one, like, I mean, those are all, I was maybe going to check out Elf and Lied, but I don't, I don't know what one you want to be watching. I definitely recommend Elf and Lied. I will have to, I can't remember which ones I sent to you. Let me. Ooh, I would. So for you, I would highly recommend watching Batum. All right, I guess I'll check that one out then. Batum should be the next one. All right, so stay tuned for next episode, and we'll talk about Batum, I guess. Batum, anime bros out. All right, peace. Peace. To your point, my majority getting cut um, by high school basketball team, completely different than losing in the NBA Finals. And I, I, it, this is a good example, right? Say you're writing a paper, and the paper is eight pages long. There is you, un- undoubtedly not a difference between you writing like two sentences and then you, like your paper got caught on fire, you lost those two sentences. Then you writing seven and a half pages and then all of a sudden, all seven and a half pages come fire. You, you, you still have nothing left after the fact. Both of them, you have net zero. But you're not telling me there is a difference between the time invested in writing those two sentences versus the time invested in writing seven and a half pages to be reduced to zero. Now, which one would make you feel worse? You're in the same, like like stage of life when you're writing that paper whereas what we were talking about before you were at two different stages of life no no exactly no no no. the process we're talking about the process you're in two different stages of process writing this paper one you have it like mostly done and the other one you just one 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 is the example of the paper like that's over the course of a day whereas the other example you gave is over like the course of like several years but same, same ratio though, same ratio. You are still working towards an end goal. One just takes longer than the other. And it's like, at what point did your goal come to an end? At what point did you fail? And all I'm saying is, Michael Jordan getting cut from his basketball team is like writing two sentences and the paper caught on fire. He still, he still has so much more time to like start over or like change his course in order to get where he wants to go. Now, that's seven and a half pages and it's due at midnight and it got burned at 11.55. Where's your time at? Where's your time at? You, you can turn it in tomorrow for a late grade, but it's over. Dude, he could just win the finals next year. He could. He could. You could just there's, there's people that have done that. Dude, the Warriors lost to the Cavs, and then they just won it the next year. And with that being said, you could always write the paper tomorrow. But if you get but, cut from your high school basketball team, most of those people aren't going on to become like Michael Jordan. Most of them, it's done right there. So their dream died right there. There is, but then there's also people who got cut from the basketball team that still make it to the NBA. Okay, but if you lose the NBA finals, like, you could still win it next year. Your dream's not dead. Whereas some people, when they when they get cut from high school, like, they're actually just, like, not good at basketball. So they're just never going to make their high school team, never going to go on to college or the pros. Is it, though? Because if I remember correctly, Oklahoma City Thunder made it to the 2012 finals where they faced the Miami Heat. Right, KD, Russell Westbrook. Oh, there's no guarantee they'll make it to the finals. Oh, exactly. But, but the thing is, there's no guarantee when you get cut from your high school team that you'll just be able to make it next year. But ex- exactly. But my thing is that, like, if the goal for Russell Westbrook and KD was to be like, hey, look, we're going to win an NBA finals together, they never did that. They never had a chance to go back there. If Michael Jordan's goal is to make it to the NBA finals after he got cut by his basketball team, he has so much more time to get to that point. 
he has, he has so much more time to correct his course. He had to do the same thing that you would have had to do if you lost the NBA Finals. You got to go home and you got to put in the work. Yes, but the his work, he has so much more time in order to correct his course. That OKC Thunder team only stayed together for like the next two or three years before KD bounced. Well, in that and scenario, you're having multiple people – collaborate on one goal so you're completely changing the argument i'm not completely changing the argument you're, you're in, that, in, that, in that scenario there's three people striving for one goal whereas what we were talking about before was one person striving okay. for one goal we'll make, it a, we'll make it a single argument russell westbrook's goal is to win the fi- nba finals the last time he's been is 2012 it's been eight years eight years and he hasn't been there since then now he still has time to make his goal but he would have much more time if he got cut from his, from his basketball, high school basketball team, and he still wants to reach the NBA Finals and win it. Right, right or wrong? Right or wrong? Um, I think it's more likely that an NBA player makes it to the NBA Finals than it is for a high school player to make it to the NBA. Really? So how, many, right, how many high school basketball players are there around the world? Let's find out. Or in the NBA? You're going to look up how many high school basketball players there are in the world? Yeah. Well, we'll do like the U.S. That makes it easier. Do you just want to talk about Code Geass now? <laughs> close, close. How many, high, how many high school basketball players are there? This is the Anime Bros, and we are going to talk about anime at some point. I don't – Christian's just like trying to win this argument that I'm never going to concede to, so. 531,000. High school high basketball school. players in 2017, 2018. So it's been a couple of years since since this came out. Yeah, but they're also competing against college players trying to go to the NBA. What do you mean? I mean, those 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 high school players are going to be competing with college people like next year that are also trying to go to the NBA. Yeah, so they they so that number is actually even bigger. Of how, how many people are like trying to get to the NBA right now that aren't in it? Oh versus, yeah, there's definitely more versus people. how many NBA players are trying to get to the NBA Finals. Yeah, that, that's hugely like catered towards. There's definitely more high school and college players, but that, that's not the argument. So you're, you're telling me right now? I don't, I don't know what the argument is. Let's, let's just talk about the show. Wait, hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. <laughs> Who has a better chance of making the NBA Finals right now, Vince Carter or a kid in high school? Depends on the kid in high school because Vince Carter's already in the NBA. He could sign a one-year contract. He because uh, I'm pretty sure he only you know, has a one-year contract with the Hawks. He could just sign with like the Lakers next year. Has pretty good chance of making the NBA Finals versus oh, a high school kid who is not even in the NBA yet. There's no guarantee he'll even make it into a college team. It depends on how skilled the high school player is. I, exactly. So you say it depends on the high school player because it depends on the skill. Who are we to say that like the Lakers will? actually decide Vince Carter. It, it depends if the Lakers need Vince Carter. If they don't need him, if no team going to the final. I think it depends on how much money he wants and what his role would be because I feel like any team would take Vince Carter just for the locker room presence. He's like a established veteran, and he's not just a veteran who's like just like refuses to retire. He's actually like been like an all-star throughout his career. So if he wants to be like the 12th man on a team, like – what He's, veteran presence does the Lakers need? They, they have LeBron. They, they have the best veteran presence in the NBA on their team right now. Yeah, but I feel like – I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know LeBron, but, like, just being told you're the greatest and then also thinking you're the greatest, I'm, I'm sure there's, like, some sort of ego there. And, and you might need someone else there to balance it out. Who did, who did Michael Jordan have? Who did, who did Kobe have? Kobe, I mean, Kobe had a lot. Kobe had a lot of good players. Right? He had Derek Fisher. No, but I'm, I'm saying that like, who, who did he have to like? I, his ego when they were like, you know what, Kobe might be the best player in the world, and Kobe also thinking he's the best player in the world. They had good role players. They like Derek <laughs> Fisher. Derek Fisher like helped they helped lift him up. They had other people that like, like were good in their role. So at this stage in his career, Vince Carter's role is like like kind of like a mentor. Was Derek Fisher really who's 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 mentoring Derek Fisher? <laughs> huh? So who who was what what mentorship role was Derek Fisher playing? <laughs> uh he was just good at his role as a point guard. Like he wasn't like taking over the game. He like knew Kobe was the guy. 
I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I'm just like trying to drop this argument because we've been we were talking about this for a while before we even started recording. <laughs> we will get off of this argument when you admit that that's never gonna happen. So you just want to like talk for like two hours about how I'm not gonna concede and you're not gonna.